Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the NOVA Project Update. Eric and I will be hosting you today. Um, we're going to, I'm going to start off by giving a brief overview of the NOVA Project, and then I'm going to go over some highlights from the Stein release. And then I'm going to hand it over to Eric to tell you about what's coming up in train and give you some information about how to contribute to the NOVA project. Um, you might notice on the slides there's a link that you can visit to um, access the slides while we're uh, presenting. There's a fair number of hyperlinks in the slides, so um, if you want to follow along, you'll be able to follow the links and look at more information as we're going through it. So what is NOVA? NOVA is a compute service. Uh, it's the REST API and components that are responsible for managing VMs and bare metal uh, servers if you use it in conjunction with the Ironic project. Uh, Novo was founded in the first release ever of OpenStack in the Austin release. Uh, we had 223 contributors to the Nova project during the Stein release. And as of the latest OpenStack user survey from 2018, 82% uh, of OpenStack clouds deployed in production are running Nova. Oh, sorry about the updates available. Um, so uh, for the Stein cycle, we had uh, something we were calling cycle themes. Uh, it was a way for all of us to help focus our efforts during the release on a few user-facing um, impactful changes. Uh, and you can look at those at the Stein priorities link there. Um, the first theme that we identified was having compute nodes capable of upgrading and existing with nested resource providers for multiple vGPU types. And what that means is uh, nested resource providers are a, a feature and a construct available in, in the placement service. And this was a, a way to, more, uh, to be able to express more complex resource allocations. Previously, it was only possible to have a flat topology, which was a compute node. Uh, and then with nested resource providers, it makes it possible to express resources nested underneath that compute node, which opens the door to a lot more um, richer capabilities. And so with that, we've been trying to make progress toward being able to support multiple vGPU types. Um, currently, when the vGPU feature came out in Queens, it's only possible to do one vGPU type per compute host. And what we want to get to is to be able to do multiple vGPU types on the same compute host. So we made some progress toward this during Stein. Um, it's now the compute nodes can upgrade um, vGPU uh, resources to the nested topology. And we still have work to do to get to the multiple VGPU, type, VGPU types. But with the support, we're now like ready to be able to do that. So the, the upgrade was implemented for the libvirt driver. Our, our second theme was around multi-cell operational enhancements. Um, the, these are things like being resilient in the presence of down cells unavailable cells, poor performing cells um, in a multiple cell deployment. Um, previously, if you were to do a server list, if you had an unavailable cell, you would simply not see the servers that were in that cell because it would be unable to talk to that cell database. With this enhancement, there, it will use um, data that's available in the API database to construct a partial representation of servers um, for the APIs. And that was all completed in Stein. Um, the other piece for multi-cell operational enhancement is cross-cell resize. So currently, if you resize or cold migrate a server, you're restricted to the cell that the server is currently in. And this enhancement would allow you to go across cells. We made progress on this during the Stein cycle, but the work is not complete and will be continuing during the train release. And finally, 
the last theme that we had was around the volume-backed user experience. Uh, boot from volume was not a, a first-class feature in Nova. It was added later on. And so there are some, some weird gaps and things that don't really work. And so we were thinking, let's spend some time and, and harden this experience. Um, so the first thing that we identified would be to add the ability to specify a volume type or a, a storage backend um, when you're booting from volume a new server. And we, we did complete that piece. So now, finally, it's possible to uh, choose a, a volume type when you're creating a server. The other parts, detach and attach of root volume and volume back server rebuild, we didn't get those to completion in this cycle. Um, they're very complex. Uh, well, we had a lot of good discussion um, on, the, on the reviews for these, but there's still more work to do to get those to completion. So now I'm going to um, go over some of the highlights from, this, from the Stein release. Um, it is now possible to run Nova with an extracted placement service. Um, some of you might know that during the Stein release, we extracted the placement code from Nova, and it now um, lives in its own repository, and it, you can deploy it um, separately. Uh, and it's still possible to run with placement in Nova um, to give like a bridge for folks to um, be planning their migration, but uh, be aware that placement in Nova w is going to be removed in the train release, so you want to plan your migration. There's a, a forum session um, around this topic on tomorrow, Tuesday at 1.40 p.m., so attend that if, if you want to learn more about how to run with extracted placement. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's now possible to specify volume type in the block device mapping when creating a server. That's available in microversion 2.67. As mentioned also earlier, as one of our cycle themes, partial information is now shown for servers in down cells. And there's a summit pres presentation about this. Um, also on Tuesday at 11.40 a.m., you should definitely check that out if you're interested in learning more. Uh, as I touched on earlier, nested resource providers are being leveraged in Nova now, finally. Um, the feature has been available in placement for some time, but integrating it into Nova uh, was a complex uh, amount of work, and we finally are, are using that in a couple of ways. The, upgrade of vGPU resources is taking advantage of nested resource providers. And then also, it's now possible to create servers with QoS uh, minimum bandwidth rules um, in Nova, and that is taking advantage of an, a nested resource allocation topology. Uh, next. It's now possible to set overcommit allocation ratios in either the Nova config file or in placement in the placement API directly. So that can give you some flexibility if you're if you prefer to manage that via like configuration management or if you're more would like to use an API. There's there's two ways to do that now. Another cool feature we have available in Stein is that compute capabilities are now exposed as traits in the placement API. And what this does is it makes it possible for you to use compute capabilities during scheduling um, by configuring flavors with either required traits or forbidden traits. So the compute nodes will actually publish the capabilities as traits to the placement API. Next, the, the Compute Resource Provider Association refresh config option can now be set to zero to disable refresh entirely. This should be useful for large-scale deployments. Um, the Resource Provider refresh is basically a refresh of the cached view that the compute nodes have. And in a large-scale deployment, this can cause a lot of traffic. Um, so you can disable it 
if you want, and you can refresh the cache manually by sending a SigHub signal. Uh, next, VMware. The VMware driver now supports live migration. This is something that's been discussed um, over the past few years, um, trying to, to get this uh, implemented, and we finally have it available in Stein. So that's noteworthy. Uh, it's now possible to configure Nova Compute to manage a subset of Ironic nodes using the Ironic partition key uh, feature. So this is useful for being able to co-locate compute services with ironic conductor services that are managing the same nodes, or if you would like to better control uh, your failure domains, this is, this is a good um, feature for you. And finally, there's QMU native TLS available um, with a libvirt driver if you have new enough libvirt and QMU. Uh, this is using uh, TLS support that is implemented in QMU and being able to leverage that. Uh, this is actually the preferred configuration if you have a new enough libvirt in QMU to, to take advantage of this. It, it will encrypt the, both the migration stream of the guest RAM and uh, device state, and then also the, the disk stream will be encrypted. And here uh, we have a list of the new microversions that are available in the Compute API for Stein. The first one is a changes before filter has been added to the servers in my migrations API get. Um, this is similar to the changes since filter, but in the other direction. So you can get it to return resources that are before or equal to the specified date and time. Next, microversion, the volume type being able to be specified in block device mapping for being able to create a, a boot from volume server using the storage backend of your choice, volume backend. <clears throat> um, also, the 2.68 microversion removes support for forced live migration and evacuate server actions. Um, this is where it used to be possible to force a migration that bypasses the scheduler entirely. But now that we have more complex resource allocations that are possible using nested resource providers, we can no longer like meaningfully support a bypass of the scheduler um, to blindly copy the instance from one place to another. And so that, that ability has been removed. Um, it's still possible to request a destination for live migration or evacuate, but that will have to be validated through the scheduler to make sure that the destination can um, actually support the move. Minimal constructs available from the server's get APIs when cells are unavailable, that's, that's our down cell support. 2.7.0 adds virtual device tag uh, information for volumes and ports via the get and post API. APIs. Um, previously, the virtual device tags were only available inside of the guest. Um, there was no way to, to see them through the REST API. And so now uh, you can query that from the API. And this will allow you to correlate information based on device tags with uh, the volumes and ports that are attached to your server. 2.7.1 adds server groups to the server's API, get, post, and put. So now you'll be able to see what server groups that server is a member of uh, right there in the same APIs. And then finally, as mentioned earlier, we have support for creating servers with Neutron ports with QoS rules. And uh, you can find lots of documentation about how to do that. And so now I'm going to hand it over to Eric, and he's going to tell you about things that are upcoming in the train release. Thanks, Mel. <clears throat> uh, so this is going to be a series of slides that are not only speculative, because we haven't had the PTG yet. That's happening at the end of this week. Uh, so this is really just like a blast of blueprints and uh, links from etherpads and, and whatnot. It's also going to be a little bit dry, uh, I'm afraid. I was going to juggle flaming swords, but the TSA took my gear away. 
Um, so unfortunately, so you know, if you have uh, something on here that looks interesting to you, like put up your hand and ask a question, because uh, that'll make it a little bit more, uh, a little more entertaining for all of us. So. Um, so in uh, in train, there's a bunch of things. Uh, Mel was mentioning that we've uh, kind of started down the path, but haven't quite gotten a chance to finish. Uh, some of these things uh, ha have been going on for several releases. Some for just a, just a release or two. Uh, counting quota using placement uh, is going to be uh, much more performant and accurate, hopefully, uh, and won't be uh, subject to as much of the uh, the downtime in the cloud. Uh, we're getting resize and migration paths for a number of uh, edge cases. Uh, I shouldn't use the word edge for a number of corner cases, uh, like being able to go from one cell to another. This continuation of some of the work that Mel was talking about, uh, being able to migrate uh, instances with SROV ports and with uh, bandwidth-enabled ports. This bandwidth fe feature that was just enabled. Uh, there's other things that we're going to be able to do with bandwidth-enabled, uh, bandwidth QoS-enabled VMs. Uh, and also being able to, to transfer a VM that has NUMA topology and have it preserve its NUMA topology on the destination. And we're going to continue this, uh, the effort of uh, removing root wrap. Uh, all the patches for this to convert over to PrivSEP have been proposed, so we just need to get those merged. And then uh, there's a, a link, the, the more link uh, points to a mailing list thread we're talking about, but that's not enough. That's only the, kind of the first step in the process. We also need to be able to make those PrivSEP routines actually be secure. They're kind of not right now. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to a little bit of that in train. And we're still removing mocks. Uh, that's been going on for several releases, right? Um, <clears throat> continuing with a lot of the, uh, a lot of the placement uh, nested resource provider work, uh, we're getting to a point where we're actually going to start needing this fast forward upgrade script to get from one uh, shape to another uh, during a fast forward upgrade when the, when the services aren't available. Uh, because we're going to be removing the placement in Nova service, we need to make sure that all of the, we're going to be helping the deployment teams, uh, making sure they can transition smoothly from placement in Nova to placement extracted. Uh, so uh, virtual TPM, they tell me, is like a pseudo device that uh, helps you store secrets on your VM. Uh, we're going to have support for, we're going to try to add support for that uh, so that you can request that in your flavor. And that's under the covers. It's going to be using uh, the traits uh, that you can put in your flavor. And, and uh, it can make sure that you land on a host that is able to do this, as well as actually enabling it when you get down to spawning your VM. Uh, similarly, there is a technology from AMD that allows you to encrypt your memory uh, called SEV. Uh, we're going to be uh, putting enablement for that. Being able to specify multiple CPU models. Right now, you can specify the, the, how you want your CPU model to show up in your VM and uh, you know, have your, your instance get deployed appropriately to uh, the host that can do that. Uh, now you can specify a list of those, uh, and it just you know, makes it a little more flexible. Um, Continuing with the volume-backed experience, uh, you're going to be able to attach and detach. I should stop saying you're going to be. This is all like maybe you can, at the end of the release, we'll think about maybe uh, attach and detach root volumes on an instance that's off, which you can't do today. Uh, being able to do a rebuild of a volume-backed instance, but give it a new image for the rebuild. Any, uh, any questions or highlights on this slide here? Let me go on. There's like a ton more, so I apologize for that. Uh, we'd like to, there's a, there's a handful of these cleanups that we're going to do. It's been a long time coming. Uh, we'd like to remove Cells v1 finally. We'd like to remove Nova Network finally. The Nova console service, as far as we can tell, isn't used. If anybody in the room knows of somebody who actually cares, if we remove the Nova console service, uh, please let us know about that so that we don't uh, pull the rug out from under you. Uh, there are some Places, the API has evolved, obviously, over the last you know, 19 releases. It's you know, gained some inconsistencies and uh, you know, different ways that it, uh, to, to do the same thing or, or uh, different syntaxes to do similar things. We're going to try to consolidate and clean some of that stuff up. And then uh, policies, they tell me, are, are a keystone thing that we're going to be uh, making, making more consistent uh, and aligning more with what uh, is being done in other projects as well. Oh, good, new stuff. So that was all just the old stuff. This is the new stuff. Um, Numa topology is a, a real pain uh, in not placement. And now we're trying to make it happen in placement, which is also a real pain. Um, it, it just turns out that Numa topology is a pain. So it doesn't matter how you try to represent it. Uh, but we're going to try. Uh, and as well as affinity. 
uh, trying to represent that emplacement is also going to be kind of a bear. Uh, I need James' slide to put the bear on it uh, for a different reason. Um, if there's a big bear out front, you can just take a picture of that. I will do that, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, all right, shared storage has, uh, has been kind of a, a bugbear to, to keep the theme going. Um, it has been a, a problem when you're sharing storage among your hosts that you're, you end up representing the total amount of storage in your cloud as being um, the, the, the sum total of all of your, each of your, your hosts, right? It, it, it multiplies your, uh, your supposed shared storage. We've been, the, it's kind of one of the whole reasons that placement was invented was to solve this problem and have your, your storage represented properly. So we're gonna be re, uh, reinstating that effort to, to get that uh, properly represented in train. Uh, persistent memory is a, uh, it's kind of the hybrid between your, you know, your ephemeral RAM and your, uh, your disk that can actually uh, persist uh, across reboots. Uh, so it's basically like faster disk and they're gonna try to enable that. Cyborg is a, a thing we've been trying to do for a couple of years. Cyborg is a project that manages accelerators uh, such as FPGAs, including uh, inventorying them, right, representing them in placement, as well as programming bit streams onto them. And we'd like to make it so that in Nova, you can, via your flavor, uh, give a, a Cyborg device profile and say, I want to attach a particular kind of FPGA accelerator to my instance and have Nova talk to Cyborg and do all of the orchestration, Ooh, I shouldn't use that word again, uh, under the covers and actually uh, attach your accelerator to your VM. All of the, uh, the chickens are coming home to roost on, the, uh, uh, on all of these features we've been putting in placement. We've been well ahead in placement, in the placement API uh, of what we've been actually using in Nova. So we're trying to use a lot of these features that we put in for the reasons we've used them for, like being able to um, do a resize to the same host without coming back with a list of all of the other hosts in your cloud that could possibly host that instance, right? That's this in-tree syntax. Being able to use forbidden aggregates, this allows you to say isolate hosts that are specialized for a particular purpose at, that you don't want regular instances landing on. This would allow you to keep those by themselves and only land the, the, the ones that need the specialized resource on them. Uh, there's a, uh, an effort to try to introduce a new resource for level three cache and be able to uh, associate that in ways that uh, makes, makes sense where the cache that you're associating is actually uh, affined to the CPUs that you're using. Um, and also uh, energy efficiency, being able to uh, uh, change the frequency of CPUs so that you can have high priority CPUs for your high priority workloads and have uh, low frequency CPUs that are that, that are, uh, saving, you, saving you power when you don't need that kind of performance. And those are uh, supposed to be uh, orchestrated through this resource management daemon, which is kind of like, the, uh, like a booster for the hypervisor to be able to talk to the platform. Uh, here's an interesting thing for the, for the operators in the room. Uh, can I see a show of hands? How many people know what clouds.yaml is and actually use it in your deployment for things? Fantastic. So if you could, uh, instead of uh, configuring eight different uh, uh, config files or config file sections for the you know, Cinder and Glance and Ironic and all the other services that Nova talks to, if you could use a clouds.yaml instead of those multiple sections, would that be a win? Would that be a good thing? Did I blow anybody's mind? Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? All right, well, uh, if, you, if you like this idea, let me know because uh, I'm going to have to fight for it in the, uh, with this guy over here. So. Um, so uh, Melanie was talking about being able to do a resize uh, without bypassing the scheduler filters. This uh, next thing, forcing the, the host, will be a similar thing where right today you can force a host and that actually will bypass the, the filters. So you could conceivably try to land on a host that can't support you. You'll get a late bounce, and, and, you know, no valid host found, and then you have to go scramble and do, it and do whatever. This would allow you to not bypass the, host, uh, f the filters so that you would instead get an early fail from placement that says, I don't have the room to put this on there. Um, <clears throat> standardizing CPU tracking, you guys don't care about this. This is something like under the covers that we're trying to, uh, uh, to make placement consistently uh, understand how we talk about physical versus, uh, or, or uh, um, sorry, pinned CPUs and dedicated versus shared CPUs. Uh, hopefully the, the result will be 
more ability to do things via placement and therefore more accurately and efficiently than, um, uh, than the way they're done today which with, with late filters. Uh, high and low priority CPUs, I alluded to this earlier. Uh, this is from a slightly different angle, uh, being able to have uh, high priority CPUs for your, uh, your high priority workloads and low priority when you want to save power. There's more. Multiple glance back ends at once. This is something that I think has been coming for a while that we're gonna finally be able to support in a non-preview capacity. Adding a reason why you locked your server uh, so that you're not confused when you go and look at it. Okay, I'm seeing nods, that's okay, I guess it's a good one. Um, secure boot, there's a couple of uh, live migrate options that are right now in the config that would be nice to be able to specify on a per VM basis. Uh, so we'd like to enable those. Being able to do your unshelve and specify an availability zone. Doing a rescue that is, actually has all of the disks that you started with on it. Uh, rather than just the, the select few plus the rescue disk. In uh, an instant state where uh, instead of going to error uh, the first time around, your instance might actually go to this pending state where you might actually be able to recover and, and put it somewhere uh, having fixed whatever the problem was instead of having to go and delete it and start over again. Uh, likewise, being able to rebuild an instance that ended up in that state. Uh, I'm not sure how those two features play with each other. Uh, maybe they maybe they overlap. For spot instances. For sp preemptible instances, you preemptible schedule, instances. Uh, external things up and try to reschedule. Okay, so uh, making the uh, uh, the bare metal instance be the source of truth for what its state is right now. The uh, Nova will actually blast the state of the, uh, the bare metal instance according to what it thinks it should be and actually change the state of it. So now we, we would like uh, there to be an option for you, the ironic instance to actually say, no, I'm, I'm actually shut down, don't, don't start me up, or vice versa. Uh, being able to do a little bit more pre-validation on extra spec and image properties so that uh, this, again, to reduce late failures and be, you know, be able to uh, have a little more consistency in your, in your cloud. Oh my goodness, okay. Uh, we, again, making, uh, leveraging all the, the work we've been doing in placement, being able to do placement-based scheduling using traits that you pick out of images uh, based on the image type, based on image metadata. Uh, more volume stuff, which might should have been with the volume stuff. Uh, being able to, uh, to add these flags, uh, delete on termination, that you could only, uh, that you used to only be able to do uh, when you initially specify the instance, now you can actually change this on an instance that already exists. Uh, performance monitoring unit, uh, being able to stuff one of those in your uh, Liveret instance. Uh, more um, validation of the hypervisor and CPU flags and capabilities uh, to again do, do more pre-validation so that you fail earlier instead of, you know, your Nova thinks your instance booted but it's really just dead. It doesn't work at all because you specified some incompatible flags. Right now you can't boot a VM with a, uh, an anonymous port. Uh, this would allow you to do that. Flavor class is an idea that's been kicked around for several releases. Uh, groupings of flavors uh, that you could actually use to, if nothing else, organize them for output. Uh, and potentially even uh, use those for uh, scheduling decisions. And then um, QMU Q35 machine type, I guess this has been around for eight years or something and we should finally make it the default. Uh, does that sound familiar to anyone? Steven, okay, I got nods. Um, and then there's, um, in the Nova and Neutron, the, the, the dance that those two do when trying to assign ports to a VM, there are some opportunities to do a lot better job of communicating the events back and forth uh, to make the, the experience go, go a little smoother and, and fail a little bit less. And so there's some, uh, some work in play to, uh, to get some of that going a little smoother. All right, we're on the downward slope now. So this is a list of some of the events, uh, some of the other sessions that are going on. Um, in uh, a couple hours, project onboarding, um, there's gonna be, an, I'm gonna try to make that a little less dry. That, that's gonna have a little interesting demo in it. At least I hope it'll be interesting. If nothing else, it'll be like uh, going to a, to a gig and watching the guitarist fall on his face or something. Um, 
So, so uh, have a look at these sessions. Some of them are, are summit, some of them are forum, um, if that distinction makes a difference to you. And then if you uh, are sticking around for the PTG, there's uh, the uh, schedule on the etherpad. I think that might be a link to the etherpad. Yeah, so now I don't know how to get back, but that was my last slide anyway. So um, any questions? I can definitely tell you that we're closer to that. Uh, thank you for the question. I'm really glad that you asked it. I'm even more glad that Gibby's in the room. Questions? Oh, let's try that. How do I minimize this guy? Just click on the slide. No, oh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> click on here. Okay. No other questions? We'll wrap it up. Oh, sir. So I'm not a super expert on this. Let's see if I can get back to uh, that. Uh, so there is actually a link on the slide to the spec, which I'm sure you would love to read. Um, and I think the intro paragraph actually kind of gives you assigning a quota flavor, uh, a quota to a flavor class. Make scheduling decisions is a little bit, a little bit vague. Uh, anyone, Mel? Stuff we're not going to do. Yeah. Okay. So notice that this spec is not yet approved. So re remember, I, I tried. I tried at the beginning to say like, well, this is all the stuff that we're going to be talking about later this week. So uh, maybe Stephen's going to say, and this shall not happen. Squash it under his thumb. Yeah. Okay. yeah like this. This proposal is uh, an older one, kind of before placement have got a lot more uh, functionality, and so it's unclear now, at least to me, whether or not we should do something like flavor classes or if we can get the use cases we want from placement, like being able to do quota based on a resource class from placement, for example, is something that is also been proposed. And so I'm not entirely sure whether we would still need flavor classes, but so we'd have to do more discussion and thinking about it. Is there a useful place Yeah, like I, I kind of, I, I have a comment on this spec actually, sort of asking for people to look at the other spec about um, quota by resource class and go through it and see if that would solve the use cases or if there's still some gaps that would require flavor classes. Because I'm not, I don't quite understand that yet, whether quota by resource class and from placement would do the job well enough. No, I was going to add you to the. I was going to add you to that spec, but <laughs> I would have to log in. <clears throat> Other questions, sir? Uh, affinity with placement uh, is that around server groups, honoring service groups with live migrations? Uh, the affinity that I was talking about was more about uh, NUMA cells, uh, being able to actually request. So right now. Uh, you can request your resources with a, you can put your NUMA, your NUMA topology information into your flavor, and then long after placement happens, the, uh, the driver will go and, and try to make sure that those, that those affinity rules can be satisfied. And if it can't, it blows up and you get you know, a late failure. Um, the idea here is to be able to uh, do that at the placement level so that by the time your allocation happens, by the time you get your allocation back, you know that that host is capable of 
servicing that topology and that, that information feeds back down and it knows how to put your, the right memory or the right device with the right CPU and so forth. Yeah, and related to that, general affinity and placement is something that we're going to need. Basically, we're gonna want to move to placement for handling affinity in general. It's just that none of that is done. Like, we haven't started working on that yet, but that is where affinity and then you might have heard talks about like distance from, you know, affinity distance from another server and all that type of stuff. That would be implemented in placement and then we would be leveraging in Innova. Anything else? All right, thanks y'all. We'll see you later on.